there's something that I never understood growing up, or even into adulthood, that I think that most women do not understand. It, I, I mean, we don't really try to. We, we just don't get it. And one of y'all commented and mentioned it, and I was like, there it is. Perfectly said by a man. Welcome back to Far From Eden. Uh, please hit like on your way in and hit subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the algorithm because, you know, YouTube doesn't like to push things like what we talk about. Um, they'd rather not. <laughs> they'd rather not instead. So, so anyway, the feminists basically uh, told a lot of lies and the thing is, is that uh, there's a lot of men who understand that, that there were lies and stuff, but the prob a big problem is that women don't know, for the most part, that they were lied to and tricked. And it wasn't for, it wasn't for their own good. It wasn't, you know, something that was going to lead to more happiness, fulfillment, everything for them. It sounded nice, but it wasn't. It was a trick much like the tree of the forbidden fruit of the not the, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil uh, that was a trick too and Eve fell for that so it's to me the same thing all of these lies that feminism has told so here we go this is from wisdom Andy dot 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 it's probably a longer uh, YouTube name but you know who you are he says just because men wanted to give women a choice to become more like men doesn't mean we also said we prefer women to be like men now some of you men hearing that well you might be like yeah duh but for women we didn't think of it this way when I was younger and it was career day and you know clearly everybody was supposed to grow up and, and be something you know not a mom and a wife but some career you were supposed to pick a career right and I never once thought oh I'm choosing to be more like a man I'm not disagreeing with the premise I'm just saying I didn't understand that that's what I was doing because the way these definitions matter. What is a woman? You think that's a recent question? It, well, it's a recent question. It's something we should have been asking a while ago. Because as a little girl growing up, you know, Gen X, um, it never occurred to me, oh, I'm being like a man if I choose to grow up and do this. In fact, if somebody had said that to me, I probably would have, because of programming, thought they were sexist. Like, oh, it's like a man to be a doctor? Oh, it's like a man to have a career? Yes. Yes, it is. Any other questions? So that right there, I, I think it shocked him when I said, I love this comment. Can I read it? I think he was probably like, I don't think he even, even understands like the, the level uh, how profound this is to say this to women this is because it it perfectly describes the why that we grew up with and maybe he doesn't realize that maybe the boys were like oh you want to be like us and the girls were like this is just being like we're not being like you we're being like us because we didn't know that we were like the first generation of women to be expected to have a career to be ex to it for it to be expected of us in fact I thought that if I didn't have ambition for a career that meant I was lazy and if I didn't have ambition for a career that meant I was a gold digger in marriage like I really thought that so I thought I was being a good person 
being a good woman to have ambition for a career and want to do that. How ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. And I say that because I know that there are women who were like me and the programming worked and you just thought, how can you say that's ridiculous? I love my job. I love this. I've worked hard to get in this blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. Sure. But be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself, ladies. Are you fulfilled? Are you happy? I mean, the level of divorce, the level of um, antidepressants, just just kind of the memes, you know, that women share, the TikTok videos. It's like, I don't know how anyone can say, oh, no, women in this country are generally happy, generally fulfilled. And then if they start to realize, oh yeah, that would be difficult to defend, then they start looking for like excuses and reasons externally why, you know, well, they can't be because this and they can't be because this and patriarchy this. And it's like, you know what? You're just gonna have excuses from now until the end of time. In reality, we are not happy because this is not who we are. And it's okay that it's not who we are. It's okay to be a woman. It's okay. It's good. It's good to make babies and, you know, manage your household. It's okay to want to take care of those you love. It's okay to think your husband makes good decisions and follow what he says and to make the promise to do so even when you don't agree. It is more than okay to do that. But we are told that none of those things are okay. And the different generations of us women have had different sorts of lies to get us to do the same thing. Ignore the importance of family, put all of our energy and value in our career, look to our career to get the things that we used to look to our family to fulfill, serve our job, our boss, our this, the way we used to serve our family. It's all misdirected. So as I said, we didn't know we were becoming more like men. So the, I know that's not even the finish of that sentence. Just because men wanted to give women a choice to become more like men doesn't mean we also said we prefer women to be like men, right? That was the second part that got me. Like I said, I thought I would be a gold digger. I thought I would be lazy. I thought it would be all of these character flaws. Like if I didn't work hard and look for a career. And I really, really thought that. It's insane. And I wanted to get married. And I thought that was something I was bringing to the table. Had no idea. It wasn't anything that the type of man I was looking for would value. But I also realized that they didn't think they could say anything because they were like, oh, we got to pretend we value the career because we, I mean, they were trained too. So, yeah, we, we thought, oh, you, you must want us that way. And here's a little secret. We actually do the things we think men want. We don't dress cute for our friends or ourselves. We don't. That's a lie. We all know it's a lie. Anyway, I understand it's a different time, but you have to understand because of allowing that to happen, most men you see or talk to have low testosterone and don't understand what it takes to be a man in the stereotypical ways. That's very interesting and that's not something I've talked about before on the channel, but yes, I have heard that in this, in this time, men's uh, testosterone has dropped. And it's, here are things that raise men's testosterone when they work out, when they eat red meat, when they're around feminine women. Well, if they're by and large being raised by women, because even if they don't have a single mom, the mom is the dominant one in the house. So the mom's deciding what you eat. The mom's just look at all the overweight children, right? Have you guys seen the difference in the Schwarzenegger children? The one that Arnold raised and the one that Maria raised? Yeah. 
One's fit, one's not. So, low T. Isn't it interesting that all this promiscuity and T and testosterone is lower? Hm. Weird. It's almost like, you know, when it used to be only the top men of a society would reproduce. Now, they got losers and felons reproducing because women can't pick. So, you know, there's no motivation. And there's the testosterone's dropping. So, he's saying low testosterone and they don't understand what it takes to be a man in the stereotypical ways. I wouldn't say it's stereotypical, I would say traditional. I would say a traditional male role, traditional masculine responsibilities. Oh my gosh, the, the MRAs who, are, who hate the thought of men being, being the protectors and the providers. I'm not saying that's most of them. I'm saying there's a the little offshoot that just gets in my, whew, is irritating. Um, but you know, they don't know why. But the reason they don't know why or how to be a man in the stereotypical way, in the traditional way, is because they, they don't see it. Where are the examples? In their household? No. All they see is, you know, if their father is in the household, he basically is living the happy wife, happy life, cheaper to keep her life. And, uh, you know, he's not in charge of discipline. He's, he doesn't make decisions at all. He's in charge of killing the bugs, um, sometimes in charge of, you know, bringing home more money, although now it seems like that's switching. But, like, he, he's got to go kill the bugs, you know, investigate the scary noise, I don't know, lift heavy things. But he's not in charge of anything in, in today's household. So what these little boys grow up to do is know how to obey the woman. They're, they're learning to follow a woman's lead. That's, that's all they're really learning to do. And when you are in that situation, I would imagine that your, t your testosterone would be lower. You know? God. So, okay. And for, and for all we hear women say, quote, I want a nice guy who's understanding. <laughs> women don't know what they want. It's so stupid. They think, we think we want that sometimes. That's what we think we want. That's like a little kid saying, I want parents that let me do whatever I want. Yeah, you might want that as a kid, but mm, that's, that's not good for you. And you know what? Those kids aren't really happy. Whose parents let them do whatever they want, they're miserable. I had strict parents. And as crazy as things were, I thank God for that. And I was thankful then for it, actually. But anyway, that's another subject. <laughs> Let me go back to my little stories growing up. <sighs> yeah, so we say, I want a nice guy who's understanding, who listens to me. You know, uh, you, you're, you want a girlfriend. And trust me, that does not work out if you think that's the type of man you want. You won't respect him. Anyway, people don't realize when women say this, they don't mean average Joe. They mean the guy they pick out who's that masculine archetype to be that, which to most people is a fantasy, right? So I think what he's saying is that women will say, I just want a nice guy who's understanding. They say that, then they pick someone they, they think is masculine who is Putting, they know they know how to get laid, so they know how to act, act the part of like he's listening and he's this. So you might get that guy who never has a you know he's not looking for a relationship, or you might get the guy who grew up talking to his mom like that, and so now he talks to you like that, and it seems so comfortable like. He's never going to yell at you. He's never going to push back. He's never going to... That's right. He probably won't. And you know what? You're going to divorce him because you're not going to respect him. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to say, 
I don't like how I always have to make all the decisions. Why is it always my responsibility? Well, because that's what you picked. And because every time he might start to, you emasculate him. So I just think that this commenter, maybe by accident, maybe didn't know, completely, perfectly, succinctly, and, and so simply, that's what makes it so profound, describe the lie that at least my generation was sold because I never knew that I was becoming more like a man to want to have a career, to want to own my own horse training business. It never occurred to me that the, the type of man especially that I would be interested in, that I was looking for, actually wanted a wife and a mother. And if anybody had told me that, if my father had told me that, if my boyfriend at the time, whom I wanted to marry, if he had told me that, if he had said, look, you don't have to go to college. Don't go to college. You know, stay at home. Do work on whatever you're going to work on. You know, which would have been staying at home and, you know, being part of my household, you know, there. I would have done it. I would have totally done it. I would have moved up there. I would have moved up there to college near him and not gone to school if that's what he had wanted. Like that's, that I was, even at that point in my life, I started college barely at 17 and then 18, like I would have done it if my father had said, if instead of saying, you're gonna be the first female editor of the Chicago Sun-Times, because he was very pro my journalism career, aspirations and my writing and all of that if he hadn't said that if he just said you're gonna make a fantastic mother one day here's what you should know to be a good wife if he had said those things if he had said I want you to remain a virgin until the day you are married regardless of what the man says regardless of the promises regardless of engagement I want you to make that promise to me I think I would have done it I do that nobody said that. I, I remember thinking, I'm doing the things I'm supposed to be doing to be, you know, a good girl, to please my boyfriend at the time, and to please my father. And it actually was all a lie. I think my father was saying the things that he thought he was supposed to say. As the boomers, I mean, they, oh man, they bought the lie. They bought the lie. Rosie the Riveter, we can do it. Yeah, but you shouldn't. And you can't do most of it. Because a lot of the jobs you're doing are just made up. Like, we don't need all these paper pushers and stuff. It's just made up jobs that we don't really need. But anyway, I really appreciate that comment. And it, like I said, as a woman... It, it, it spoke to me because that is exactly how I, I think my particular generation uh, that's how we got here. Now, Gen Z, the younger people, I don't think they were ever told to have a career. It's they're at a point now where it's expected because now that the women are in the workforce and expected to be in the workforce now, Gen X was the first, then millennials all had to. Now they have to, because now we have the inflation caused by doubling the workforce and the salaries and, and um, what people get paid has gone down. So now everybody has to work. So they don't have to give, give the, sell the lie anymore because now the women are like, well, I have to. And in reality, it can be done where you don't. You can, you can rebel against that. But the problem is, is that they don't believe it. They don't believe they can. They don't think, well, I can move to a different location. We can just have one car. It can be a used car. It can be, you know what I mean? Like they don't really know how to live 
within their means to live inexpensively. I know that in this country, the United States of America, there are housewives, housewives, who are stay-at-home mothers and wives, and their husbands are average earners, an average earner or, or less. It can be done. You have to live in a certain area. You have to, you have to shop, you know, secondhand. You probably have to know how to repair your clothes. You have to make food. You don't go out to eat. There's all, you don't have subscription services. You know, there's all kinds of things, but people are not used to making sacrifices and they certainly don't think that they should have to. Um, but you absolutely can. Gen Z has no idea. That, 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 that it's possible. So, but I, I think there's a little pushback. I don't think it'll be enough. Um, the powers that be want it this way far too much. It's, it's useful to the powers that be to get the political climate to be what they want it to be. They want things to be feelings driven and you don't get things feelings driven if you have if you have the men in charge or even have the men you know 50 percent so get all the men raised by dominant women reacting off feelings and there you go and it started with these lies and i can't believe i never realized i was just becoming more like a man And that is very anti-woman. That is super anti-woman. To, to dissuade women, to lie to women, to make them think that there's something better for them than being mothers and wives. We're so dumb. <laughs> like. I am like, sometimes I'm like, hey, I thought I was one of the smart ones. <laughs> like, I guess not. So better late than never to figure it out. But anyway, so I don't know. I thought that was very profound. And if I could have, you know, five minutes with a woman, particularly from my generation, I would explain this to her because I think when we explain it like this, most women will go, huh, I don't remember it being a choice. And if it had been, would I have chose differently? Probably, probably. Anyway, thanks for hanging out again. Um, keep the comments coming. Somebody, <laughs> You stinker. <laughs> Somebody, Jeff from Australia, he said, I want you to do a reaction to Citizen Kane. Seriously, dude? Seriously? No. Oh, we'll see. I still need to do a reaction to Titanic because I haven't seen Titanic in probably since the late 90s. And, uh, you know, you kind of know what happens. No, just kidding. And now that I understand uh, female nature more, and I, I always thought there was room up there for him, and they did not try hard enough. Like I, that always frustrated me, and there were other things that frustrated me in that movie. But like, the more I think back to the parts of it I can remember, the more I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like a, it's a Jenny Forrest Gump situation. So I need to do a, a reaction to um, Titanic and uh, I'm just figuring out like how to break it up and do it in different parts or what have you. Uh, it'll get copyright claimed, but I don't really care because I don't do this to make money. I often say I'm not a YouTuber. I am a woman who realized all the lies and then realized what men were going through retroactively saw it in my father and thought, oh my God, I have to say something. And then here I am. So I'm not over here trying to, you know, get rich off YouTube. I am trying to buy 
better camera and microphone so that you guys can hear me better and, and it doesn't get on your nerves. So, so that's what we're doing. Anyway, I really appreciate, appreciate you guys. And, um, and the thing we talked about yesterday about um, the little girl, I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't been to the barn yet putting on a brave face and just being strong, prayed a lot. And, um, you know, I've got, this is my game face for what it's worth. So I'll let you guys know when I know. Thank you guys for being there last night. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Take care of yourselves.